Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and this little thing just arrived in the mail a few minutes ago. This is another Packard Bell that will be added to my collection. This is the Packard Bell Multimedia D142. I've um, been after another designer tower case um, Packard Bell for a while because I had to sell off all my um, old ones, so it's really good to have another one again. Um, it's a little bit yellowed, but maybe we can retro bright it this summer along with some other stuff. Um, and it's a little bit dirty, but that can be easily cleaned up. The specs of it, it's got a 133 MHz Pentium. Um, I believe 16 or 32 megs of RAM. Of course, that may have been upgraded by the original owner. A um, 8-speed CD-ROM. At least I think it's an 8-speed. And um, a hard drive of unknown size. And um, how it came about this computer, um, well, those of you who watch my videos probably also watch um, videos by LGR, aka Lazy Game Reviews. Well, he contacted me a few weeks ago saying that someone had contacted him offering him um, this Packard Bell for free. But he didn't have a need for it, so um, LGR gave me the... Um, the guy's information and I contacted him and we were able to make out a deal and he sent this to me for free um, well I did pay for the shipping but I now own this Packard Bell he I believe came across it he bought a house and this Packard Bell was left in a shed of the house that he bought and it still has all the original parts in it presumably but we will be upgrading it so um, to who sent it to me Thank you very much. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. It's always good to add new Packard Bells to the old collection. So let's take a tour of this machine. There's our CD-ROM. Floppy drive. Hopefully it still works. And our model tag. We'll flip it around. And here's the back. There's our sound modem card. A SCSI card, it looks like. Uh, of course, that wouldn't have been original to the system. And our uh, port layout. we got a serial port, parallel port, keyboard, mouse, two USB ports. This was very early for Packard Bell with um, USBs. And a VGA out. And according to the sticker, it was built... April the 9th of 1997. And I can already see some dust caked in on the power supply there. And there appears to be no screws holding this top on, so we can go ahead and open it up and take a look inside. A little bit of dust in there, but that's there's no real big surprise there. I guess we can go tripodless. This uses the, uses the PB680 Orlando board. Packer Bell used these from uh, late '96 into 1997. There's our sound modem card, our uh, SCSI card. So I still got the original CMOS battery. Um, I probably will be replacing that. There's our processor. A lot of dust in there, but we can um, take this outside and uh, use the air compressor on it. CD-ROM. I believe that's a Gold Star drive. And there's our hard drive. Um, Looks like, um, I, I can't see the front of it, but I can tell from the back that it's probably a Seagate. And there's our memory of unknown size. So, I guess what we need to do next is hook it up to our test bench and power it up. I already know that it works. He sent me pictures of it working, so let's go ahead and um, see what it can do. Alright, 
Let's see if we let the magic smoke out. Okay, getting a monitor signal. Looks like we got 64 megs of, of RAM. That's pretty good. It's probably going to complain about a dead CMOS battery in a second. Just picking up the hard drive and the CD-ROM. Yep, CMOS time and date not set. Uh, wanted that to go to the BIOS, not whatever that was. Uh, of course, that was probably my fault. Okay, it's January 1st, 1990, so um, I guess that means I'm only one month old. <laughs> There's usually nothing too exciting to see in here. Well, this does have um, an S3 Trio 64V Plus um, video. Extremely common video card back in the day, but a really good card at that. And I do have a fresh CMOS battery we can pop in here in a few minutes. Yeah, nothing exciting really to see there. Okay, starting Windows 95. Oh, I like that uh, Packard Bell uh, logo there. Sorry about that. My dad came in here to take care of something, and coincidentally, um, he ordered something on eBay. It was the wrong type of battery, and he handed these to me. CR2032, so we'll be able to replace um, battery in here um, with no problem. That was convenient timing. <laughs> okay, um, I guess this is the original install. Do we have a... Uh... Okay, it must have the... Um, Internet Explorer Active Desktop Update, since I was able to do that. Surprisingly, no Packard Bell Navigator. But that might just be missing from the Start menu. Okay. Our Device Manager. Our S3 Trio. Zoom in there a little bit. Okay, as best I can get the camera. Sorry about that. Network, uh, there's no network card in here. AOL adapter, that's interesting. And um, something's not right with the SCSI card. Device is not present or not working properly. Uh, it's no big deal. I'm not going to keep it in here anyway. And our sound card seems to be working fine, but I don't have any speakers hooked up right now. So yeah, we do have the active desktop update. PB Tools, um, that sh should give us a look at the system credentials because we have the original hard drive in here. It's hard to find a Packard Bell these days with the... It's hard to find a Packard Bell these days with the original hard drive in it, which means we get a look at our system credentials as well as our format number, all that good stuff. And I need to kick, quit keeping kicking that tripod. It's not very nice. <laughs> okay, there's our serial number. Format number is 557307. Pentium 133 MHz. 16K of cache. Seagate drive, um, it's like 1.7 gigabytes. 
exceeds all test parameters. Um, this one actually says April 10th of 1997, so I guess that's his birth date, April 10th, 1997. I, at the time, was in first grade and seven years old. Now, is Navigator still on here? Huh, looks like it's not. <laughs> Well, I'm not keeping this um, install on here anyway, but I am going to back up the um, logo.sys file because I really did enjoy that having the uh, Packard Bell logo there in the uh, startup. So, what's the rest of this video going to be? Well, it's going to be us um, cleaning this computer up and performing a few upgrades. So stay tuned, and we will um, do that right now. Okay, first thing I want to do um, is actually back up the um, computer's master boot record, which contains the system credentials and the format number. And years ago, this was impossible to do on a, uh, on a Packard Bell, but thanks to a um, Packard Bell Facebook group I run, um, a couple of years ago, um, someone in our group was able to develop a little bit of software that, that lets you back up the master boot record and copy it over to another hard drive. Um, so if you ever put another drive in your Packard Bell, you can back up the system credentials from your original hard drive and copy it over. So um, this will also be a good test to see if the uh, floppy drive still works. So first, actually, let's... Uh, we have to boot from it, but I want to just see if it'll even read from it in Windows. All right. Floppy drive in this computer works, which is good because I do not have a replacement. This uses a free DOS kernel. Okay, start MBR tool. Okay, we need to back up track zero, so we'll do uh, option five. We'll do save. Enter source disk number. Um, I guess it would be A for the floppy drive. Enter target file name, we'll do D142 and it's saving track 0 written to file D142 and not only can I copy this over to a uh, another hard drive, CF card, SD card, whatever I'm going to use in this computer from now on I can also um, back this up to my main computer in case something ever happens to it. So I will um, do that once we get out of here. And it just takes us back into a DOS prompt. Okay, so let's get to um, doing some spring cleaning on this computer. We'll get to cleaning shortly. I just want to show you how it looks on the um, floppy disk here. On my main computer, so you got D142.128 We'll go ahead and copy it over to the desktop. And I'll open up Notepad. We can actually look at it through um, Notepad, if I remember correctly. Okay, maybe not, but you can see um, a few little things. But I will be uploading this to my Facebook group for people who can um, compile this to uh, do as they wish with it. So, I will do that now, and then, I promise, we'll get to cleaning. Okay, we're about to dust this thing out with the air compressor. So, uh, headphone users, you better watch out. Let me see if I can find the plug for it. 
All right, headphone users, final warning. Three, two, one. <laughs> Anticlimactic, huh? Well, that's because I forgot to turn the uh, power switch on on the compressor. So, headphone users, this is your real final warning. Three, two, one. Okay, I did most of the cleaning off camera because um, I didn't think you would find that very entertaining. It was just mostly me poking at this with a magic eraser, but it looks a little bit better. Again, it's a little bit yellowed. Maybe we can take care of that this summer with some Retro Bright, which I've never done before, so um, that may be an interesting experience. <laughs> and still a few spots on, on here, but it does look a little better than it did. And as far as yellowing, I've seen a lot worse. <laughs> so, now the part that you've probably been waiting for. Let's get to upgrading this with some of these parts right here. First thing I want to do is um, get rid of this old CMOS battery. This was original to the system. And pop this brand new Sony branded one in to its place. Voila. Now, um, just to let you know what I'm planning to use this computer for, this is going to be my, uh, I know I do a lot of these, this is going to be kind of my ultimate Packard Bell I'm going to have set up in here, so what I want to do is I want to take this bog standard 133 Pentium and install um, something that we've done a video about before, this Intel Pentium Overdrive. Um, this is an MMX. So this will give this computer MMX instructions. Now this CP, this um, motherboard can take a regular MMX, but um, I just happen to have this lying around, so why not use it? So, got to find a tiny little screwdriver to pry this uh, metal bracket off of the heat sink, which we will not be needing anymore. If I can do this on camera, that would be cool, but I can't make any promises. Okay, I think I got it. Wow, no uh, thermal compound on there. That's interesting. So, let's... Uh, thankfully, it's a metal lever, so we don't have to worry about it breaking. That has happened before, unfortunately. So we'll take out our uh, 133. And uh, let's see, I guess this will go in like this. It feels like it's in there. Boom. There we go. We've got an MMX in there now. Now, before we go any further, since this was kind of a serious upgrade, I do want to go ahead and power it up just to see if everything um, is still working. Processor speed, 200 megahertz. Doesn't say MMX, but it, it is an MMX, so trust me on that. <laughs> I probably will put a regular MMX in here at some point. They're pretty cheap on eBay. That's right, we put a new battery in there, so let's go ahead and um, put in our settings. Today is um, March the 14th. Not April, you dummy. March 14th, 2019. And it is 2.33 p.m. good there. Oh, there we are. Um, MMX technology. So it's seeing it just fine. Okay, I 
guess everything here looks good. Alright, let's see if it um, remembers our settings. Sorry for the noise, my dad's hammering something outside. Alright, didn't prompt us for uh, anything, so we're good to go. Okay, next on our upgrade list is I want to populate these um, video RAM um, upgrade sockets. I harvest these chips out of the uh, corner packard bell. Don't worry, the corner packard bell will return someday. But for now, we're going to borrow its um, upgrade chips, and we're going to take the um, S3 video on here from one megabyte of video memory to two megabytes of video memory. So, um, they just go in... Uh, guess like this. Never done this enough to really know for sure. I don't know if I'm doing that right or not. <laughs> They are in there, so um, really no good way to test it right now, but we should have two megs of video memory. Next thing I want to do is I want to take this CD-ROM drive out and put a better one in. Um, reason for that is I tested the CD-ROM off camera, and it has serious problems with ejecting, and it's probably dead anyway, so I figured might as well go ahead and put a nicer one in. We're going to replace it. With this um, nicer LG drive, it's a lot faster too. Not sure what speed it is, but I'm sure it's a lot faster. Go ahead and unhook it from the back. And I cut my thumb knuckle just now. And the CD audio cable. I want it to come out, but there we go. And it's on these rails. And just as I thought, it is a Gold Star drive. And so now i got to take these rails off. By the way, if you have a Packard Bell and it uses these drive rails, guard them with your life. These are impossible to find now, so yeah. Don't ever lose these. Alright, should just slide on in. Snap. There we go. We'll plug it in. This drive dates from the year 2000, by the way. Okay, I don't know if that last part um, recorded or not. I'm having SD card problems, but the uh, CD ROM is installed now. Now to add some expansion cards, including my uh, 3DFX Voodoo 1 and a um, D-Link network card. So first we'll take out this uh, SCSI card. Not getting rid of it, but it's not needed in this system. Use this one right here. And I also did a little bit more cleaning on this computer off camera. go. This is what the SCSI card looks like. Not sure the model number. But we'll add the network card in its place, something that I'll get a lot more use out of. Looks good now for our uh, 3D effects card. That can go... Uh, let me see how this will... Uh, I need to take out this bracket. And we'll 
pop it on in. We're almost done, folks. We just need to change out the hard drive, which I'll show in a moment. There we go. And that's what it looks like there in the back. We'll go ahead and um, connect our video pass-through cable. Take it from the video out on the motherboard. I realize you can't see that. <laughs> and connect to the video in on the Voodoo card. There we go. Next, the hard drive. Okay, we're going to be upgrading to something um, a little bit better than what's in here now, so we'll disconnect this. And I already backed up the uh, master boot record, which you saw on camera. And I also backed up uh, that logo.sys file that I mentioned earlier. And there's our hard drive. It is indeed a Seagate 1.7 gig. We'll toss that aside. And we're not going to be putting a hard drive back in here. So we'll just put the caddy back where it goes for uh, future use. And screw it back in. And I will show you what we'll be using um, instead of a hard drive in a moment. Okay, in place of a hard drive, we're going to use this nice little um, SD card to IDE adapter, which is sporting a 32 gig um, SD card. A lot bigger than I need, but it will work. Go ahead and connect it. Yeah, I got that in right. All right. Guess we can just let it sit there for now. Well, let's see if we um, how how badly we broke this poor computer. <laughs> okay, looking good there. Still post. Okay, it's picking up the uh, adapter. Why no CD-ROM? Okay, the CD-ROM is being detected now. It was just, the connect, the cable was not loose from the motherboard somehow, as was the floppy drive cable um, on the drive itself, which you may have saw the error message about a while ago, but, you know, it looks like everything's being picked up just fine. Um, it's a 32 gig um, SD card, but it's only picking up 8 gigs, but I have a way around that, don't worry. Okay, here it is, set up in its new home, complete with matching monitor and keyboard and media select panel. So we are ready to go now. Okay, it says insert bootable media in the appropriate drive, so we will go ahead and do that with a Windows 98 boot disk, because we need this to boot into, uh, well, to load up a program called Easy Drive, which is... Um, drive overlay software which will allow um, the computer to see all 32 gigabytes of this SD card because right now it's only seeing 8 and that's uh, just a limit of the motherboard currently there's nothing on the drive at all and of course I skipped the uh, CD-ROM setup because we don't need that right now Yeah, so far the computer's working great. I haven't had a single problem with it yet. Oh, you know, I shouldn't have said that. Something's going to go wrong now. I just know it. <laughs> if you're wondering where the Gateway 2000 went, it's still here. It's still in use. It's just below the desk now. Okay, we'll take the 
Windows 98 disk out, pop in the Easy Drive disk. First, let's see what's on there. Okay, um, I believe we type Easy. I think this was made by Western Digital, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, welcome to Easy Drive. Uh, Hopefully we don't have to open the computer back up. Okay, we'll just go ahead and do a fully automatic install. You have chosen to overwrite. Um, are you sure you want to continue? Yes, it's going to partition it and everything. Of course, we won't be keeping those partitions. But it's best to go ahead and do this. And it needs the boot files from a boot floppy, so we'll put the 98 disk back in. And after this, we'll um, load the master boot record onto the drive. And we'll just use um, a 32 gig uh, FAT32 partition. Again, we won't be keeping it, but okay. Hard drive is partitioned, formatted, and ready to use. Remove any disk and press Escape to restart. Okay, let me grab my MBR tool disk again that we saw earlier. Don't want it to boot from it just yet. We want Easy Drive to load first. Okay, to install an operating system from OS, for OS from floppy, insert the first disk and to drive A. Okay. We're not installing an OS, but we are booting from a floppy drive, so we do need this. All right, this is what we saw earlier. Start MBR tool. And we'll do uh, track zero work again. And this time, instead of saving, we want to restore, which is selection number two, disk number zero. I believe it was D142. All right. Looks like we're done with that. And. The system credentials are now on this SD card. So now what we need to do is, um, well, I need to burn a CD so we can um, restore this from factory settings. Well, it's actually been four days since the last part of this video. I ran into um, a pretty enormous issue with this computer. The computer's just fine, don't worry. Nothing's happened to it. It's just um, a little bit quirky when it comes to hard drives. And by that, I mean it does not like any kind of drive um, that's above 8 gigabytes in size even when you use disk overlay software as we saw earlier what I encountered was um, I went on ahead and installed everything off camera I did all the master CD stuff upgraded to 95 OSR2 but the problem was I would get constant um, errors on this computer. It, um, I would get so many program crashes and and I would get constant blue screens of death saying that it could not write to drive C. So obviously something was going on with the hard drive. I tried um, different SD cards, same issue. I tried a um, CF card, same issue. What wound up fixing it was just switching over to a good old fashioned hard drive and what's in it now is a 6 gigabyte western digital hard drive. It's a lot smaller than what I wanted to use on this computer but the thing is it works beautifully. I don't have any more issues. This computer is as solid as a rock now. And so with that said let's go ahead and power it on and see what all I've done with this computer since the last time you saw it. I also upgraded the BIOS to the latest revision. That did not fix my um, hard drive capacity problem either, by the way. I am considering installing a uh, PCI IDE controller card to get um, bigger hard drives in this computer to work, but the only one I have right now is not bootable and 
computer works just fine right now, so I'm not really going to worry about it. Uh, we'll ignore the domain for right now. Okay, when it was powering up, you may have noticed that the uh, memory has gone down from 64 megs to 32 megs. Well, that's that's because with 64 megs, I was having trouble getting certain DOS games to work properly, namely Jazz Jack Rabbit. It's known to be a little picky with um, computers with higher amounts of RAM than it's used to, and I figured, you know what, I'm I really don't need that much RAM in this computer anyway, so I took it back down to 32 megs and um, Jazz Jack Rabbit works just fine on here. So we can uh, look at Device Manager here. S3 Trio, Sound 3. Now the master CD I use on this computer is um, a little bit older than what was intended for this computer. This computer was from April of 1997. Well, it originally would have had a uh, much newer software package than what I'm used to, along with Navigator 3.9. Well, I used a slightly older CD from 1996 that still had all the drivers for this computer, but also had the older software pack, including the older Navigator and the games that would have come on my Legend 822 CDT. I just simply prefer that. Also, I want to show that... Um, our system credentials were successfully copied over to this new hard drive. I don't know if you can see it or not. So we got that going for us. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, load up a game. Won't keep you guys much longer. I know this video is getting kind of long. And I'll do a more in-depth video on this computer at some point in the future. Now, I haven't tried this game yet on this computer. I just installed it. But I don't see why it shouldn't work. Apparently I can't skip through the uh, title screen. Okay, a little Sonic 3D Blast for you. Very underrated game in my opinion. Okay, what's my joystick doing? <laughs> for some reason I keep having to recalibrate it. One moment. That's better. Um, it wasn't a calibration problem. It was um, a switch on the bottom of the joystick was switched to the wrong position. Not, not many people like this Sonic game, but I do. I remember playing it on um, the 822 back in the day and on the um, Sega Saturn I had back in the day. I think my favorite part of any Sonic game is this sound right here. I love that spring sound. Barneeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
And um, that's enough of that. That pretty much proves that um, this computer is able to game just fine. Um, DOS games work great as well, um, although they work better under real DOS. So yeah, this computer is working just fine now. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll take a closer look at the software on this computer at a later date. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and call this quits. Till next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.